friends. All right, so now we're gonna make the flower to go on our lily pad. I've taken a big chunk of my clay and I've rolled it into a ball about this big, okay? This part may be trial and error. You may make one of your flowers and realize it's way too big compared to your lily pad and that's okay. You just tear it off and start over. That's the fun thing about clay is squishing it and starting over. So I've rolled my clay into a ball. I guess it's a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but it's definitely smaller than a baseball. You can also roll it on your work surface too. All right, now we're gonna start off by making what's called a pinch pot. And that's very easy. We're going to literally pinch and push our fingers into our clay. I find it's easier to push down onto my work surface like this. And that helps you be able to pull your sides up. Now, just like we said, we wanted our lily pad to be no thicker than our finger, the tip of our thumb. The same goes for the walls of our flower. So as I told you to pull up on our clay, we don't wanna pull it to where it's paper thin because we're about to cut petals. All right, you can also dip your fingers in a little bit of water to help smooth it out. Okay, now I'm gonna take my little plastic card and I'm gonna make some slices, upside down triangles to start making my petals. Okay. And pulling out that clay. So I'm getting pieces like this. If you want to use your dowel, you can. I find this works easier because you can cut it in from the side and support your petals like I'm doing. So you just turn it and go at an angle and cut that out. I'm just gonna work your way all the way around to where you have an even amount like your flower. And you can just put all your extra clay off to the side. So now all this is very rough so now we have to start smoothing. So you can take your slip bucket and just start smoothing all these edges of our flower petals. Again, try not to get them too thin, but whatever you see will fire that way. Glaze does cover a little bit and we are using an opaque glaze but we still want to work on our craftsmanship and focus on having nice, smooth edges. Now, if your fingers start to get really, really, really shiny and super, super gray, like you look like you came out the movie The Swamp Monster, that means you're using too much water. My hands, they are gray but it's kind of like a powdery. You don't see a lot of gray slime on my hands. That's how you wanna be. If you're really slimy and really gray, you're weakening your clay and we don't want to do that. Also, make sure you're picking up your piece and looking all the way around. So not only are we checking our craftsmanship on the inside of our piece, we're looking at the outside as well. It kind of looks like a little crown. And that is our flower. Now you can take the end of your dowel and do some indentions to kind of look like the middle. If you want, you can also roll up a smaller ball and flip it out like a coin 
and do your little indentions in there if you want. Now, this brings us to our most important step of how do we attach all of our pieces. So, I want you to grab your lily pad very gently and bring it back over here. So, everyone has these little mascara wands, okay? This is what we're gonna use to score. So, say I want to add my little coin piece in the middle. I'm gonna take my mascara wand, I'm gonna scratch it all up on my clay. So, it's all rough. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing in the inside of my flower. And then I'm gonna dip my wand into my slip mixture. And it's very slimy and gooky, but that's what we want. I'm gonna apply some of the gook onto the bottom and apply a little bit into my flower as well. This acts as our glue. Then I'm gonna push it down and kind of just smooth it out. If you happen to squish some of your holes, you can go back and redo them. But then that way, I've got that on the inside. So now I'm going to very carefully do the same process to the bottom of my flower. You can roll it back and forth. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to my lily pad. Now you wanna make sure you're not rolling too big. We want it to kind of be the same size so that way when they match up, you don't have to worry about smoothing out anything too far. I'm gonna get some more slip, put that down, put that down just like that. And then I'm gonna attach them together. Now, I'm not just gonna set it down. I'm gonna kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure they're adhering together. And I'm gonna very, very gently push down too. All right. And then I'm gonna smooth my flower petals. And again, just wiggle it in place. And now I have my beautiful Monet's water lily. The last step that you need to do, and I don't have any of them here at my house, so that's why I'm not doing it, but you need to take your alphabet pasta letters and put them somewhere together. Like if I was putting EW, I wouldn't put an E here and a W here. I'd put them maybe right here, kind of close by my flower, and I would put them together so that I would know it's Emily Welch. All right? And then you have your beautiful flower. Now, you're gonna wanna set these somewhere safe where little siblings or your pet won't accidentally squish them because right now it's a very delicate state. You're gonna wanna let them sit for a couple days. Then you can bring it back to South Highlands, have your parents bring it back, preferably in a shoe box because before the first firing to turn them into bisquare, they are extremely, extremely fragile. The slightest little bump can just shatter them. So it's very important that you take good care of it and keep it safe. When you bring it back to South Highlands, like I said, please bring it in a shoe box or some sort of little box, and then I will fire them all together once they dry out. These are kind of thick, which is what we want. So it's probably gonna take them about a week for all the moisture to evaporate out before I can put them in the kiln. After I fire them, I'll package up some glazes for you and you can come back and get it and paint it and we'll fire it one more time and then they'll be nice and shiny and beautiful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. I will live Zoom during our weekly Zoom meetings on Wednesday and Friday, depending on which grade you're in. And if you have any questions, like I said, send me an email. I know you're gonna do great. 
and I can't wait to see your creation.